What's up everyone, Brennan Mejia here. So I have been an actor in Hollywood for almost two decades at this point. So with my experience, I've learned a lot of different things, what to do and what not to do on set as well as beyond the set. So in this video, I'm gonna share what some of those unwritten rules are and what happens if you break them. All right, let's get into it. So this first rule you may think would make sense for you to consider, but some people don't always do it. And what I'm talking about is coming to set fully prepared off book. Now, what is off book? That's basically, so if you have, let's say two pages of dialogue for your scenes for that day, you need to be memorized. Like you are not looking at that script for those two days, for those two pages. You wanna be off book so you can go in there, do the scenes like a professional because if people have to wait for you to memorize those lines, that's time, which is money, which is other people's time. And you probably won't be invited back onto that set once your episode finishes. Now, again, sometimes they'll make changes on the day to the script, but they do their best to give you those changes as early as possible. This is also something really big on soap operas where they're known to shoot entire episodes in like one day and you'll get pages upon pages of new dialogue the morning you step on a set. Shows on that tend to be a little looser with you being word perfect, but I've been on other shows where they cared so much about the dialogue being every and, uh, them, whatever the heck I was saying verbatim because they had this particular script approved by the network and they weren't allowed to deviate from it. And then that's just the beginning because once you know the words, speaking is not the same as acting authentically, right? And if you get the script the day of, just do your best to memorize it as fast as possible with the changes because it does happen. And one of the ways, a pro tip that I have found to help me is I will use one of those voice recording apps on my phone and I will record my lines and the other person's lines and I will just put my AirPods in during lunch or wherever when we're not shooting to learn the new scene as quickly as possible. Or if I have someone else to go over it with me because that also helps when I'm actually reading with another person versus just reading my lines and then not having someone say their lines. I've been on sets where people have not come prepared and it's not always because they're not trying to be prepared. Maybe it's because they just had a late night filming something else the day before or people are working back to back projects. But sometimes it's just been laziness or people have been out partying too late and then they wake up and they're like, oh, I kind of didn't learn my lines. If you're not prepared and you're negative and you're just whatever and you're hungover, I don't even drink, but if you're hungover and you're on set, again, that brings the tone down because yeah, to you as the actor, you know, whatever, maybe you're just guest starring, you're in it for one episode, but the cast and crew, if they've been on a show for five, 10 years, that's their livelihood for their families. So if you're not coming in prepared, you're not only making yourself look bad, but you're potentially affecting the ratings, which affects other people more likely to get another renewal for their next season. So keep that in mind. Here's another rule for you guys. If you were hired as a co-star or a guest star or recurring character, and you're not used to being on sets, when you get into your trailer, they typically have your wardrobe hanging up. So you've already done a wardrobe fitting at this point where you came in a separate day, tried on the clothes for your character, and then they picked the ones they liked. And so now you go into your trailer, you're all happy, you're on set, and you have your pants, your shirt, and your shoes, right? You change into it, you shoot a long day. Let's say you went overtime, 12, 15 hours, you're tired, it's dark, you have to drive across town and you go back into your wardrobe trailer and you just throw all your clothes in a corner and then you change into your clothes and you leave. Don't do that. Hang your clothes back up because again, even though you're tired, you're now creating more work for the wardrobe department if you don't hang up everything because they have to come into all the trailers and grab everything and then take it and go wash all of it. So maybe you're wrapped at that point, you're done filming. That doesn't mean the other production members, other people on the team get to go home yet. They sometimes have to do the laundry first and then they get to leave. And so I've heard, I haven't done this myself, but I've heard wardrobe on different shows complain multiple times how actors will just basically be sloppy. They'll just throw their stuff in corners and they won't pick it up or it'll be all inside out or they'll sometimes leave with some of the clothes from set either on purpose because it was expensive and they like it or an accident, they'll forget to take off the jewelry for the character. And then someone has to track them down and be like, hey, you took the bracelet or the necklace from set. We actually need that because it's continuity in another scene or whatever. So don't do that. If you're in a very expensive costume and you're eating lunch and you're prone to spilling, sometimes it's better to change out of what you're wearing. This was very big on Power Rangers. Not that our clothes were expensive, but they only had so many extras of our clothing. So sometimes they'll buy like two or three in case there's a stunt and it gets ruined or something. But if you spill on your clothing, 
Someone has to now take the time to go rush and clean that if they don't have an extra of that shirt or pants or dress or whatever you're wearing. So if you can make sure you're either really eating over your plate or maybe even change out of your shirt or sometimes they'll give you like a jacket or something to wear while you're eating. So that's a rule depending on the set. Cause I've been on other shows where they don't care at all. And it's like, yeah, we trust you, you're an adult. Don't spill on your clothes. But other shows, do your best to protect your wardrobe. Uh, and that even means like when you're sitting down, like if it was raining and you sit on the grass and now there's a grass stain on your clothes or you lean against the wall and now there's like grease on your clothes. So just being mindful of what you're wearing and at the fact if you have makeup on and you put your hand on your face, yeah, I know you wanna act normal and authentic when you're filming, but if you're not filming and you're just like on your lunch and you're just like, doing this a bunch and then you put your hand on your white shirt and your my skin tone and now your shirt is brown, not a good thing. So just be aware of what you're wearing and what you're touching so you don't mix the two things. And so going into rule number three, and again, this varies depending on, you have to be good at reading the room. If you are a co-star again or guest star, you know, it's your first day on set, it's not that you can't go and sit with the leads because honestly, I, I don't like the idea of there's a hierarchy on set, but in some ways there's a hierarchy on sets and it depends on the sets. It's kind of weird. It's like being on the first day of school. Like, where do I sit? Where do I eat? To me, it's much better if I sit by myself and then I get invited by the cast or the crew to be like, hey, no, come sit with us versus I'm just gonna sit right next to the lead and be like, hey, how's your day going? And start fanboying on them. You were of the same craft, of the same skill set, And now if you're like, can I take a selfie with you and take pictures? Now you're basically putting yourself in a different, different light for them. And so now that you've crossed into fanboy territory, it's hard to regain that ground. And it's not that you can't ask for a picture at some point, but you have to be tactful and again, read the room. Because for instance, when I was um, the Red Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge, I purposely would spend a lot of time eating with the background actors because I liked getting to meet new people. So I'd go sit with them and talk to them. And some of them didn't even know I was the, the lead, whatever of the show. Uh, and they're like, why are you sitting with us? I was like, cause you're all people. But I've been on sets where I'm not the lead and I very much do not feel like I'm supposed to go sit with the leads. And it's not that they're being mean or anything necessarily, or that they're being divas, but they're so busy with the amount of scenes they have to shoot, they just wanna eat in peace. Oftentimes the leads will get their lunch and they'll just go back to their trailer because they have a bunch of dialogue to memorize. So if you sit there and try to stop them, be like, can I have a 20 minute conversation with you and lunch is only 30 minutes? you're probably not gonna win yourself any brownie points. I was working on a set the other day and I would like a picture, but I didn't ask for one. But then the, one of the leads wanted to take a selfie with me and the other actors who were on that day. So I still got the selfie because they're like, oh yeah, let me send it to you. But if I were like, hey, can I get a selfie? Some of them are cool with it and others are like, mm. Now they look at you as a fan and not as a professional doing the same craft. You don't wanna go run and ask for playback after every take. And I know, it seems like, well, I just wanna see what I did so I know what to do better. But that's why you have a director. It takes too long for you to run back and be like, oh, that's cool. If they invite you, they, hey, look, so I want you just to see this because when you're walking in, um, you're blocking the other actor because you're, you're taller than them and you're standing in front of them, so do you mind offsetting? But typically they can tell you that just verbally. You don't necessarily need to see it. So start paying attention more to your surroundings again. Now, it doesn't mean you can't ask to see a specific take. Again, this comes to reading the room, knowing how much time you have, knowing how many takes have been done. If you're like on take 20 and what they're saying just isn't making sense, then maybe you'd be like, hi, Mr. Smith, um, I understand what you're saying, but I think it'd really help if I could just see what the lighting is like. Um, if I can see the last playback, I understand if we don't have time for it, but if we do, I just, I wanna make sure I fulfill the vision you're trying to hit. So if you word it in a way where it's creating a solution versus just adding another problem of wasting time, you're more likely to get grace for it. The intention of why you're doing it has to be felt by the other people you're trying to do it with. So this unwritten rule is more about helping yourself. So all these other ones are like, don't do this because potentially you'll cause a problem. If a take or a certain scene requires you to be like, playing someone is paralyzed, so you're stuck in a bed, or let's say you're tied down to a chair and no one's bringing you water or something and you've been in that chair or tied to the hospital bed or whatever for hours and it's a really hot day, it's okay to ask someone, be like, hi, um, I can't really move right now. Would you mind bringing me over a water? Or hey, is it okay uh, on the next take if I go use the restroom? Or do you mind removing the hand restraints? Because I've been on sets where the person didn't wanna rock the boat, so they didn't say anything, but 
you could clearly tell because of how hot it was and I was drinking water and it wasn't my job to be that person's advocate, but I, I ended up getting them water because no one else was doing it. They weren't asking for it. And I was like, if I were them, I'd want someone to bring me water. Remember everyone on set is a person who has their own sets of problems, who can also potentially use help and you don't wanna cross the line of like, well, now I'm doing someone else's job and you know, they, they have certain people to move equipment and props and all those things. But just remember, as much as you're like trying not to freak out because you're on set and it's scary and it's exciting and there's anxiety, you're not, you know, doing something that should ever be so great in your brain that it still brings away from doing normal acts of kindness. So another unwritten rule, this one, I say this every time, but it really is so subjective because it's like art. If you really, really feel like the way the scene is being shot or the way your character is being directed just doesn't make sense, you can say something, but it may cost you your job for that specific film, TV show, whatever. But at the end of the day, it's your face that's on screen forever. But I've been on jobs where I really disagreed with how my character was being told to be directed. And this was a show that I was on for multiple episodes. And I just felt like my character wouldn't act the way that they, this director wanted me to. And this wasn't the director for the entire season. Uh, they swapped directors every few episodes. So I am playing this character for the entire time. And this one director wants me to play this character that's very opposite of how my character's personality has been. And I ended up getting a note later from production that they really loved it. But they're like, yeah, that one thing though that you did in this one episode, it just didn't seem real. And I trusted the director on that instead of my own gut. I should have fought to have at least one take the way I want it. So that's something you could do. You'd be like, all right, I'll, cause they're like, oh, do it this way. And you know, you just feel it in your soul that it's supposed to be the polar opposite. Either A, say yes, I understand. And then just, I mean, again, do it at your own peril. Do a take the way you want it and just be like, oh, I didn't understand, you know, whatever, kind of hide it. Or be like, all right, do you mind if I do one this way and then we'll do one your way? Because if you give them what they want sometimes first, they'll be like, all right, yeah, we don't have time, sorry, we'll move on. And then there's no chance for you to do it the way that you knew it was supposed to be. So just keep that in mind. It's You can just do what the director says and be like, sorry, I was just being directed. Sure, throw them under the bus. But at the end of the day, then they're gonna have to use a take that you know doesn't fit the storyline the way that it should. So take that with a grain of salt, do with it as you will, but just keep that in mind. So I kind of touched on this rule and the other rules, but don't exert negative energy just because. And I know different people have different styles of acting and there's different thoughts on what method acting even is. And some people are like, well, I gotta come to set negative because my character is a murderer and I just gotta be dark all day. You know, like again, to each their own, but personally, no character you are portraying is worth being a jerk to other human beings. Unless it's in the script and you're talking to another actor while the cameras are rolling, but when they're not rolling, be nice. I mean, you're not curing cancer. You're, you're, you're making art, which is fantastic, but I think you should always elevate each other, you know, again. And if you're in a scene and you're supposed to be negative, that's different. But once they yell cut, go back to being nice. And I know if you have to get emotional for a scene, like it's hard sometimes if you're like, hey guys, what's up? Now I gotta cry in five seconds, action. Sure, you can even be like, hey, you know, I just, I'm, you can talk to your other actors too, you know, like, especially if they're professional too, they'll understand that you may need a moment. You know, I worked on a show where the guy was very professional, but before takes, he'd put in his headphones and get into the zone because it was like a very serious scene and he had to, like, he didn't have to cry, but that was the choice he made and it worked really well. And I could just tell that wasn't the time for me to go bug him, you know, as the other actor in the scene. So I let him do his thing. But then once the camera was done, he was back to being like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. Nice talking, nice seeing you. He was very good with, I'm filming, I'm in the character or right before with my headphones. But once it's done, the scene is over. He went back to being a normal human being. Like, hey man, let's go grab lunch. You know, it's, so don't be so connected to your character to the point if your character is a bad guy, so to speak, that you're now being a jerk to the cast and the crew. That's, again, other actors may tell you otherwise, but I don't think it's worth severing human connections and then just blaming it on my character. You shouldn't have to actually be a jerk. It's acting. You can act like a jerk when the camera is rolling without actually being a jerk. Be on time. And by be on time, I mean be early, especially if you are a guest star 
and not the lead on the show. I mean, I would say as the lead, you should set the tone and be there always on time as well, but you'll probably get more grace if you're in season five and you're late one time because of traffic versus if you're the guest star on your first day and you're 20 minutes late, tough luck getting back on that show. If the freeway is closed because of like an accident, of course, call whoever your contact is, typically someone from set, the second AD or whoever will tell your call time and be like, hey, you know, they'll text you and email you. Call time, 7 a.m. in the morning, we'll see you then. And then maybe it's like 6.45 and you left your house two hours earlier, but again, the freeway shut down, out of your control, be like, hey, you know, I left at this time, but the freeway is fully closed. They will then, as fast as you are aware of it, instead of waiting to the last minute to be like, hey, I'm supposed to be on set in one minute, but I won't be. If you tell them, they can sometimes then like, hey, you know, the freeway's closed. They can't get here. They're going as fast as they can. Can we switch the scene order? And sometimes they can shoot other stuff first to give you more time. But if you never tell them until the very last minute, they don't have that flexibility anymore. And now you're gonna waste their time even more. And the first time wasn't your fault, but now it's kind of on you for not alerting anyone. So do your best to always be on time. And by being on time, be 15 minutes early or more. <laughs> This isn't really a rule because this has only ever been on Power Rangers. And again, when I did Power Rangers, it was non-union. I've never heard of it on a union set, but they had this thing called a slab. Basically, if you did something that caused more work for other people, they would someone on production would call slab, which meant you had to buy drinks for everyone <laughs> in the crew. So yeah, it happened to a couple of Rangers. I can't even remember exactly why, but like if you were late to set or you know, you messed up your costume in a way that wasn't supposed to be messed up in the scene, you know, you could get slapped. Someone had to call it on you though. So you could do things and get away with it. Uh, I mean, one time Yoshi and I were almost slabbed, I think, because he stood on my shoulders to do a circus trick, but we were wearing our wardrobe when we did it. And then someone called slab because like a shoe print got on my shirt. And I was like, I'm not actually slabbed though, because the producer asked us to do that. So no, I've never heard of the slab thing on any other set. Maybe it exists, I don't know. That was literally the only time I ever heard of it. But it's apparently a thing sometimes. So these are not hard, fast rules that you have to lock in, write them down and read them every night before you go to set. But they're just things to consider on your journey if you're happening to start your acting you know, career and you have your first day on set next week. So now that we've laid down some of the unofficial rules, if you're curious what it's like to be the lead in a show behind the scenes, watch this video.